when Quarantine Peru started, there were many thousands of tourists in this country from the United States, from Europe, from Australia, Israel, Asia, all over. There are hundreds of thousands of tourists come to this country every year. Why do they do that? Why would they come here? They come for the number one tourist attraction in all of South America. Machu Picchu. I'm gonna do a few videos on this place because it deserves it. It's truly one of the most spectacular places I've ever seen, maybe the most spectacular. Uh, today I wanted to talk about the, can't call it the discovery, can't even really call it the de rediscovery of Machu Picchu. And, uh, but what we can say is bringing knowledge of Machu Picchu to the wider world. And it was done in 1911 by an explorer named Hiram Bingham. He was one of those 19th century, early 20th century explorers who went out into the world, deep into jungles and polar ice caps and places like that and brought back stories of fantastic places. Um, he was a lecturer at Yale. He married into the Tiffany fortune and used his wife's money to <laughs> used his wife's money to travel all around South America, deep into the jungles. Uh, he was a notorious womanizer, which uh, ended in his divorce, and she was like, no more of this. Um, so he wasn't a great guy, but he did some fantastic things. And the thing he's most known for is what he did in 1911. He had come to Peru in search of Vilcabamba, uh, which was the last Inca stronghold. Um, uh, Atahualpa was the last emperor of the Inca Empire, and he was uh, murdered in um, 1533 by that scoundrel Francisco Pizarro. Uh, the, the empire collapsed then, but there was still a bit of a holdout, um, and so around 1572 and Francisco Pizarro had already been murdered by then, gracias a Dios. Um, uh, but, but the last king, so he really wasn't the emperor of the big empire because the empire was gone. But the last king was Tupac Amaru and he was, uh, his last stronghold was in Vilcabamba in the Sacred Valley near Cusco. Uh, the Spanish found him and uh, took him back to Cusco and in a, another act of cruelty, executed him, beheaded him in front of his subjects. Uh, that was the end of the Inca Empire, even the last vestiges of the Inca Empire in 1572. They tore apart Vilcabamba, but and then it, the jungle took over and it was lost. Uh, and. Hiram Bingham wanted to find it. It was Papaya Man. Um, so Hiram uh, went to Cusco and he uh, started an expedition looking for Vilcabamba. So he went through the Sacred Valley to Ollante Tambo. To love those names, Ollante Tambo. Vilcabamba. And he followed the river, sacred river, Urubamba deep into the jungle. Should I go get a papaya? Somewhere around Ollante Tambo, he met a peasant farmer named Melchor or Melchor Artiaga. And he asked Senor Artiaga, do you happen to know or have you ever heard of a lost city somewhere out in the jungle? And Senor Artiaga said, yeah. See? And I can show it to you. Here's a picture uh, Hiram Bingham took of Senor Artiaga 
crossing the Urubamba River. Eventually, they come to, I don't know if there was a town there then, maybe a little village, uh, but it would be where Aguascalientes is now, uh, the, the little town at the foot of Machu Picchu. And he said, here. And Hiram Bingham's like, where? And he's like, up there. There's a switchback road that goes up that mountain now. Uh, back then, of course, it wouldn't have been. But it really is not that, doesn't take that long. It takes about 90 minutes to climb that. If you ever go to Machu Picchu, you'll see many hundreds of people do that climb, sometimes before uh, sunrise. Um, I s just so strongly recommend that you don't do that. The reason is there's so much climbing once you're at Machu Picchu that to spend the time and the energy doing that first climb is uh, a really a, a wasted opportunity, especially if you only have one day. So don't let somebody say, oh, that's, Let's do the climb that Hiram Bingham did. No, take the switchback road. Hiram Bingham and Senor Artiaga, without a switchback road, make the trek up the side of the mountain. Once they're up there, they find two peasant farmers living in a little shack there. That's why we can't say Hiram Bingham discovered Machu Picchu or rediscovered Machu Picchu. You can't discover something if people are still there. So uh, he notices that the farmers are planting on what looks to be a terrace, an ancient terrace, meaning a wall, retaining wall with uh, land. That's how you grow crops on a mountain. Uh, and he said to them, hmm, is there more to this structure? And they said, yeah. And they happened to have an 11 year old boy with them, the son of one of the farmers. And they said, bring him up, show him. I read that the boy took him up to the top of Huayna Uh That's the mountain behind Machu Picchu when you see a picture of it. Uh, and I, I, that, I don't believe it because that makes no sense at all. Why would they do that? Um, you don't need to go up over Huayna Picchu. So uh, he took him the remaining way up and came over a ridge. And this is what he saw. It was covered with vines and trees growing in it, but it, just imagine that first view. Oh, wow. Wow, I found some uh, pictures uh, taken in by Hiram in 1911 and then comparison uh, once everything was cleared, Machu Picchu of today, here they are. The locals called it Machu Picchu in Quechua meaning old mountain. Hiram Bingham called it that too much Picchu, even though he believed firmly for the rest of his life that he had found the lost city of Vilcabamba. But in fact, he hadn't. Uh, Vilcabamba was found many years later. Um, and Vilcabamba had been destroyed, like Cusco had many, many temples in Cusco had been destroyed. Machu Picchu was never destroyed because the conquistadors never knew it existed. Yes! So uh, it was intact. Um, Hiram Bingham, uh, I believe he got um, a grant from the National Geographic uh, Society to uh, go and photograph it. And he brought it knowledge of Machu Picchu to the, the wider world. Um, he's the kind of, he's the kind of guy I really like. You know, I like that kind of intrepid explorer with a machete hacking his way through jungles. Uh, he, uh, he's really one of the really well-known discoverers, like Howard Carter with Tutankhamun. Um, 
there's, I, I've heard, I, I don't know if it's a crater or there's some feature on the moon named after Hiram Bingham and the train, the tourist train going from Ayante Tambo to Aguas Calientes is called the Hiram Bingham. Here comes Papaya Man again. I might have to go get one. But one last thing, just, could you imagine that moment crossing over that ridge? with the mist, cloud cover. I don't know. I don't know if there was cloud cover, but I like to think there was, because I like to, I like that image of, of the clouds parting and the mist lifting. And Hiram Bingham gazes down upon Machu Picchu. And then he went and got a papaya.